Emergency podcast, guys. Sixto Sanchez returns for the Marlins. He ends up having a clean one, two, three inning gas at 95. Finish the inning with a strikeout on the curveball. Sixto Sanchez is back. This is Locked on Marlins. You are Locked on Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked On Marlins, an emergency podcast episode of Locked On Marlins. I'm your host, Peter Pratt. Hit me up at Miami Marlins underscore UK. If you listen to the pod, of course, hit subscribe and leave a review. It's your team every day, sometimes twice a day. And that is the case today. Uh, there is a YouTube channel as well, guys. Make sure you hit subscribe over on the YouTube channel and join me in the comments section where it is always fun and wild. Guys. Sixto Sanchez is back. There is a sponsor, though, for this episode, so we will do that. This episode is sponsored by our good friends. Of course, over at FanDuel, you can make every moment more. New customers join today and get $150 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Guys, reminder, this is an emergency podcast. For those that aren't watching and don't have the rundown of help, yes, we are talking Sixto Sanchez. We are dedicating plenty of this podcast because it's a Sixto emergency pod to his spring uh, return. We're also talking Yuri Perez. We're also talking Jazz. We're also talking Avi. We're also talking uh, Tim Anderson. So even though there's tons of Sixto, there's some other updates we need to get into. But let's get right into it, Sixto Sanchez is back baby back on a big league mound for the first time in three years maybe even longer <laughs> it feels is it even longer i guess it is sixo sanchez not pitched for the marlin specifically since the postseason in 2020 wild scenes uh sixo sanchez finally working his way all the way back uh there's been a lot of doubters along the way there remains a lot of doubt as clearly this is one spring appearance uh, against the Mets. Low leverage situation, not starting the game, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, we have to call it out. Sixto Sanchez back on a big league mound. Feels like a, a huge step forward here. Um, not sure what the future is going to entail for Sixto Sanchez. I frankly don't think the Marlins know. And I'm not certain Sixto knows what the future holds. I don't think anyone knows at this point. All we've got is the body of work that he's putting on tape. Um, there's been a few false dawns over the few years. There's been a few pitches thrown from 67 and a half feet, whatever it might be. But nevertheless, Sixto back on a mound against the Mets. Uh, there was, I tuned into the radio coverage. So I had Kyle Selaf for coverage, which is always top draw, and listened along to what was going on. My assessment of this was there wasn't a lot of fastballs thrown. There was a lot of secondary stuff thrown. Um, he ended up getting three outs, three batters, three outs. That's all you can ask. All you can ask. The first one was a fly ball out to Avicel Garcia in the outfield. Second one was an infield fly into, I think, Luis Arias um, made the out. And then the final one, which is where he actually started to mix in his fastball as well. So we get to see the 95 Gasolina. Gasolina from Sixto, 95 miles an hour plus all of the secondary stuff. Um, he ends up with a strikeout on the curveball uh, to end his day. There was a nice reaction, I would say, from both uh, Casali, who was catching him, Equally, there was a nice, you know, round of applause as he, you know, went back to the bullpen or whatever it might be as his day was done. I wasn't watching it. I could only go from what Kyle was telling me. But overall, this is like hugely encouraging. And to be honest with you, it's hugely unexpected. Um, Sean Barrett put up a good poll earlier on, like, what is the gas going to be? Now we're here. There's no hiding places now, in theory. What's the gas going to be? He had a he wasn't certain that the reports from, uh, you know, BP and whatever uh, would be would be totally accurate. But 
6 0 at 95. Uh, fair play, we get our answer. And when we think about 6 0 Sanchez, he it was never his fastball that was like the, the damaging pitch for him. Like, that's never been part of his repertoire. Like, surprise, surprise, he's got like a devastating changeup. Um, you know, that's kind of what Sixto is. And when we go back, like, let's remind ourselves Sixto Sanchez, you know, in that 2020 season. For me, the the, the start that stands out, he made his debut uh, against the, the Nats. Uh, in uh, when was this? This was August, 23rd of August in 2020. He made his debut. It was a seven inning double header by the looks of it anyway, or seven inning game. Uh, he went five innings in that, gave up two home runs, three earned runs total. Uh, the Marlins ended up winning it though, five, three. Um, but his next outing, I remember watching this one in its entirety and I can remember it vividly. Seven innings of zero run ball against the Rays. There was 10 Ks in there and just a single walk. 12 ground balls as well in there mixed in. He threw 92 pitches and uh, it was it was glorious. He then doubled down on that against the, the, the Blue Jays. Another seven inning outing. He gave up a home run in that, two earned runs in that, five Ks uh, as well. He then... In the next game, on the road in Atlanta, clearly no fans, but the Marlins spanked the Bravos in this game. 8-0, six innings as well, zero run ball. He then, against the Phils, went seven innings in a double, in a seven-inning game. The Marlins won that 2-1 and a single earned run given up. Sixto Sanchez at this point was like, you know, everyone was going bananas about it. He pitched great against the Rays, great against the Blue Jays, great against the Bravos, great against the Phils, all back-to-back-to-back. Uh, starts and at this point, Sixto hyperbole was truly cooking, and a lot of people were driving that bus. But he was he was everywhere, and the Marlins and the Marlins fan base at that point were looking and thinking, "This trade for Riamuto feels fine, feels good." So you know, it's good to remember, you know, what Sixto was for the Marlins even in 2020. It's been a long road back. Clearly, it's been a few bumps in the road too for certain in terms of PR, in terms of tons of things. But Sixto Sanchez back on the mound. It's fair to say Craig Mish has not been a full believer of uh, Sixto Sanchez. It was funny to see, you know, his his uh, tweet on this situation. Craig's there, I think, uh, with Hayes. So, you know, I hope the guys are enjoying the game. Um, but Craig's summary of this was Sixto pitched an inning. He got three outs. Mostly off-speed stuff. Iconic moment. Iconic moment for Craig Mish in attendance. Uh, seeing Sixto Sanchez go. Um, all right. We've seen what we've seen. I'm interested to see. Like, again, I don't know. I don't think the Marlins know what's going to come of this. I don't think maybe Sixto does. The challenge the Marlins actually face here at this point is that Sixto has no minor league options remaining. So... He has to make the roster or go on the IL or clear waivers at this point. Will anyone claim Sixto Sanchez? Potentially, like maybe you would. I, I don't, I don't, I, who knows? I'm, there's, there's a couple of weeks left to go in spring. What role could Sixto Sanchez step into at this point? Clearly, at this point, the Marlins are, you know, they're being ultra careful with him. But let's say, Let's say for the rest of spring, Sixto rolls in, pitches an inning here, there, and everywhere, and it's effective. The fastball's good. There's no, you know, he's not hurting. Like, is Sixto going to start the year in the pen? Maybe he will. And frankly, you can kind of hide him in the pen in some ways and let him get his kind of feet wet again at the big league level. So with the no minor league option things, is definitely hurting the Marlins at this point. I think they'd absolutely love to be able to send Sixto down, you know, and work his way fully back. They decided last year not to do that. Like, the Marlins had the ability to not use an option and to play Sixto straight up on the 60-day IL and just leave him there for the full year. They could have done that and, and retained that option. That's on the Marlins. They made that call. They didn't want to pay him the big league money, um, so they sent him down, put him on the, the, the minor league IL, Burn the option doing that, save the money, but now don't have the option. 
We're going to see if that actually matters in the grand scheme. Going back to Craig's tweet, he's pitched. He got three outs, mostly off speed. Is he a big league pitcher at this point? He's just got three outs. <laughs> it's better than what Tanner Scott did the other day. <laughs> I mean, that's the funny thing with baseball. It's hard to compare sometimes, but all the indicators at this point are really positive for Sixto. They're really positive. Like, this is a huge step forward. The gas is there. Um, the off speed was there. Three outs, no damage. Like, you just put this one in the book as a huge success. It's a huge success. It's a massive day for Sixto Sanchez and his recovery. And good on Sixto. Fair play to Sixto Sanchez for getting back to this point, working his way all the way back. You know, we haven't seen him on a big league mound since the postseason in 2020. So three and a half years. Three and a half years. So good on Sixto for working his way back. It's fair to say he's had his critics in terms of his body shape and all this kind of stuff. And there's been some PR issues. And there's been tons of things with Sixto. But honestly, good on him for working his way back and persevering. I don't, you know, at times it must have been tough for him. Who knows, you know, mentally where he would have been. Like, not being able to do what you love. We assume he loves it. We assume he isn't in the uh, Anthony Rendon bucket. But let's assume that he still loves baseball. I think he does. You know, not being able to do what you love that you clearly had a, you know, flash and obvious talent for three and a half years ago is, must be really tough mentally. So good on six, though. This is a huge positive step. The Marlins don't have a ton of wiggle room. Sixto doesn't have a ton of wiggle room. But if we get, you know, another four or five outings from him inning here, out of the pen, and he shows the gas is there and he can get out, then Sixto Sanchez is going to make your opening day roster for the Marlins. Maybe. Out of the bullpen, probably. But as we've already seen today, like, I spoke about it on the, the episode earlier. We are talking about Ryan Weathers. Yuri Perez exits the game early. Early. Pitch in depth. It's so critical. We're going to talk about that straight after the ad uh, and talk about Yuri Perez and what this means too because this, not good news. He's been dealing with this issue. So we'll talk about that shortly. Before we do that, this episode is brought to you by our good friends over at FanDuel, of course. Uh, guys, and you can get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Welcome back to a Sixto Sanchez emergency podcast with me, Peter Pratt. Uh, I just wanted to call out that this emergency podcast is coming at probably the wrong moment for me. It's my wedding anniversary. Uh, me and my wife, Tara, are going to be celebrating that. Well, we should be probably celebrating now. Um, but I did say, listen, I need to listen to this Sixto winning on the radio. Carl C. Laughs broadcasting it. What a voice. I then said it was a positive one. Twitter's saying I need to do an emergency pod, so I need to step out and do an emergency pod. <laughs> so there we go. Um, I'll uh, I'll make it up to her later on uh, in the usual way, which is uh, I'll I'll you know get up early with Theo, <laughs> look after him. Anyway, Sixo Sanchez is back, back baby, and he has a chance of making this roster. Like he really does, mainly because there's no minor league options uh, remaining, and that was the Marlins' decision to be in that situation. But Sixo Sanchez legitimately could make the roster, which for me, would be wild. Truly wild. Yuri Perez, let's talk about it. Could he not make the roster? Is he going to need some time away? Let this thing heal. It's, it was reported early when he reported and started you know, doing bullpens that he was dealing with some sort of like minor blister issue. Uh, lo and behold, we get to a game in which he's pitching well, but had to exit early. Yuri Perez exits the game early. Mel Stoudemire out there, the training staff out there, Skip Schumacher out there, and he, he exits the game, according to the reports, linked to a blister issue that he's been dealing with. So how are they going to manage this? Like, is this going to be, listen, Yuri, let's shut it down for, uh, you know, a week, week and a half. Like, let's get this right. You know, these 
He's working with a different type of grip on, you know, some of his pitches. Is that the reason? Is that the root cause? Probably it is. Nevertheless, it feels like one of those things where, you know, is this going to be persistent with that grip? If it is, you need to consider, is that the right approach? If this change in grip anyway is going to impact him from a blister perspective and he's not available, then you really need to make a decision about whether that that grip is uh, sustainable moving forwards. Taking that away, he has an issue. And at this point, it needs to be managed. The way injuries are typically managed are you stop throwing for a period. So is Yuri Perez all of a sudden going to be behind the curve? Are the Marlins going to be down another starter? Spoke about it on the earlier podcast today. Yes, it's been a doubleheader. You know, that's how we roll on Lockdown Marlins. But, you know, Lazardo's definitely there. Braxy looks behind, is behind. Trevor Rogers looks like he could be behind. Could Yuri Perez now be behind because he's got to shut it down for blisters? Next thing is, you're looking around going, okay, Lazardo's in. Puck at the moment looks okay. Okay, so Puck's in. Weathers, he looks okay. He looks durable. He's in. Okay. Uh, Max Meyer, can he do it? Maybe. Uh, who's next? <laughs> who's next? Sixto's next. I don't know. Brian Hoeing's next. George. So this is the reason why the Marlins have stretched out so many guys. Like all these kind of middle long relief du reliever dudes um, are all being stretched out because like they need it. And we're seeing it like every time, every time something goes on, we're seeing someone get hurt. The good thing is it doesn't sound like it's like super serious for Yuri Perez. Um, doesn't feel like that situation. But do you remember Edward Cabrera last season dealing with blisters all year? You know, when he'd have to exit the game early, I think the year before that, Eliezer Hernandez dealing with blisters all the time too. It's the type of thing that like once it occurs, it doesn't seem you can't you struggle to shake it off, and then it just persists and impacts your performance every outing. It's really discouraging to hear this about Yuri Perez. So, if it's linked to a change in grip, or I think it's maybe like a you know maybe a curveball grip that's being changed. I don't know. Need to look need to look back on that. But for me, that's really discouraging. Really discouraging. So. Yeah, let's let's see how the Marlins manage this one, and let's see if Yuri Perez makes his next start the next time around. Uh, I think the game's still going on, so we won't have, won't have heard specifically from Skip or anyone after this. We know the Marlins will play it as they always do, as everyone always does. He's fine. He's day-to-day. -day. He should be back next time. Next thing is he's on the IL. We know the drill. Same with Braxton Garrett. Same with Ronald Acuna, by the way. Some wider, bigger news. Ronnie Acuna, scratch with, like, knee soreness. Next thing is don't need an MRI. Next thing is we do need an MRI. Next thing is he's tweeting stuff. Cryptic. It sounds like he's gone for the year. Has he done his, a has he done his ACL again? Could be huge news in the NL East if Ronald Acuna uh, is missing any significant time. We'll see. But this is it for every team, for every, you know, for every superstar. Everyone's dealing with the same challenge. Their main challenge is health. Can I stay on the field? The Marlins are dealing with that. The Braves are already maybe dealing with that too. They lose Ronald Acuna. Man, oh man, that's it's tough for the Bravos. Could be tough. The Marlins, lose, they've already lost Sandy Alcantara. That's tough. What happens if they lose Yuri Perez for a period? What happens if they lose Braxton Garrett, Trevor Rogers? I mean, it's tough. So tough. That's why baseball, the one six two, and particularly, you know, particularly the pitchers as well. Like it's so hard to to stay healthy. It really is. Almost impossible, to be honest with you. Let's talk about some of the offensive guys, though, because, you know, this this uh, game today, that they started hot. Started hot. Jazz Chisholm Jr. with a blast, an easy blast, by the way, a double against Sean Manaya Lefty. So lefty on lefty crime there for Jazz. It's another huge thing for Jazz Chisholm. Not only can he stay on the field, talking about Ronnie and everyone else, but if Jazz can stay on the field, uh, and he can hit lefties, then boy, oh boy, like nine war might not be enough. That might be, he may be underselling that. Jazz 150 plus, elite center field, and lefty on lefty crime, pff, put me in for double dig war, baby. Um, but looking great there, Jazz. He has looked good all through spring, to be honest with you thus far. I think he's maybe four for eight or four for nine. Um, you know, a couple of RBIs, a stolen bag in there. Jazz looking good, really encouraging. Avisel Garcia finally got off the mark with a double as well. So Jazz doubled up, then, then so did Avi. 
Uh, and not surprisingly, Avi, you know, tucking into a, a lefty. I do think that if, if the Marlins do persevere with Avi, for whatever reason, if you listened to my podcast earlier last, well, the back end of last week, you'll know my feelings on this at this point. But if Avi is to be on the roster, because the Marlins decide for whatever reason they want to retain him, then his only role is as a short side platoon dude. And we saw that today. He can be effective against left-handed pitching. So I said a few weeks ago as well, why I felt like the Marlins potentially have an, a way to trade Avi for someone that needs a right-handed, you know, power stick that's done it. The Marlins would have to retain a ton of the dough, but like there is a need for that. But there's still a need for that for the Marlins as well, to be honest with you. Like, Jesus Sanchez and Avicel Garcia are probably the perfect platoon, to be honest. So it's encouraging to see Avi getting a double against the lefty, getting his, getting his uh, spring off. Tim Anderson, we've seen two, two highlight reel moments. Well, one in particular, I guess. I uh, believe there was another really nice defensive play today. Um, so that's the really encouraging thing. Spoke about it on the earlier podcast today. For Tim Anderson, he has to he has to play at least average shortstop. If it's anything like last year, he's not going to last. So what we've seen early from Tim Anderson, including today, feels really encouraging. Equally, he got the stick going as well. First knock for the Marlins in spring. Uh, I think I saw a clip of it. It was like a you know a relatively hard hit ball grounder. I think through the middle um, of the infield. But either way. Hits a hit, as they say. Luis Arias also got his spring off and run in. Who's concerned about Luis Arias? Anyone concerned about Luis Arias? <laughs> he was 0 for 7 uh, coming into this one, but no more. The O had to go, and now it has, which is great to see. Nevertheless, it's good to see some of the offensive guys, you know, getting, getting some action. Jazz, for me, has been one of the standouts. Um, Tim Anderson has been a standout thus far, but primarily on the defensive side, which is really what I want to see. Abacel Garcia, he's got it rolling. And Luis Arias is back, baby. But the main highlight, guys, and the main reason for this emergency pod in the middle of a wedding anniversary evening for me is that Sixto Sanchez is back. Three outs, one, two, three inning, 95 gasolina, showed all the secondary stuff, including a strikeout on the curveball to end the inning. Sixto Sanchez has a pathway to the opening day roster, likely in the bullpen, very likely in the bullpen. I'd be surprised if he could get up um, and be fully stretched out at this point. The Marlins will tread very carefully. But Sixto Sanchez has an opportunity if he stays healthy. And that's always it's always the concern with everyone. If he stays healthy, you could see Sixto Sanchez pitching out of the bullpen for the Marlins from opening day onwards in 2024. Appreciate you joining me on Locked Up Marlins, guys. I look forward to seeing you guys very, very soon. There's so much happening right now with these Marlins. Great to cover them, no doubt. Look forward to seeing you soon.